everybody. I'm just up here at the uh, old dam above Brunegloy's Quarry. Uh, let me show you. There it is. I don't know if you can work it out. It's quite difficult now with the trees there. But this shape here, this is the breach in the dam. And this bit here, this is the dam wall. And if you could just see there, that's the old tower. You can imagine how much water was behind there when it was full up. Now I want to tell you about what happened to this dam and why it's breached. Now in 1880, in August, it was hot and really thundery. Now it had threatened to rain, it had threatened to storm all week. Every day the clouds had built up, but nothing could come of it until Saturday. On Saturday morning, the clouds built. They built and they built until lunchtime it started to rain, just a drizzle at start and then heavier and heavier until it rained like nobody had ever seen before. It rained in a biblical proportion, some said. The men who were working in their allotments on Saturday were driven inside and I'll tell you what, to drive a slate worker inside on their only day outside was a big deal. It must have really, really been raining. Sunday, church day. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, underground. It rained and it rained until all the little streams on the hillsides had overflown. It looked as if the whole mountain was just one giant waterfall. The Guerno and the Desuni River burst its banks within hours. The fields were inundated. Now the men were worried. You see, some had great concerns about where this dam was placed, just upstream of the workings. There was nowhere for any of this water to go. It had to flow down and into the big pit, into the big hole, and then through and out at the bottom. The men were worried, so a few of them decided to come up to see whether the mine was okay, whether the dam was okay, sorry. And when they got here, they noticed that although the dam was full to the brim, it was working well. It was overspilling, the river below was full, but everything seemed fine. And just as they were about to turn to head home, they heard a crack on the hillside above, on Taranhendre, and a great swamp of mud a landslide, landslide came down and washed into the lake. A wave the size of a house was produced and it smashed into the dam wall, taking off three foot of the top and cracking from top to bottom. Now this made the men really, really worried. They knew that the mine was below, but even worse than that, the village was below the mine and so they started to run. They ran as fast as they could to the village and when they got to the village they raised the alarm. Everybody, everybody, the dam's gonna break, the dam's gonna break, quick, get the children, let's get to safety. So they took everybody out and they got them to the high ground in the village where the chapels were. About five minutes later they heard the sound of cannons going off on the mountain. A sound that they said could be heard from Tawin. It was the sound of water rushing, piling, filling the big pit, the hole, and the air being forced out of all of the tunnels. The dam had gone. Now, they had very little time minutes at most before the flood came to Abergenolwyn. They got most people safe, but a few couldn't be moved. The old fella who owned the shop opposite the pub was ill. He was upstairs in bed praying with his daughter. The miners, they got him out. They carried him through the roof of his house and out onto the barn next door and down and out and over to the chapel just as the first wave 
of water inundated the shop. It smashed the shop completely, completely gone. Not a thing left. The storehouse next went. Houses, carts, horses, livestock, everything washed away. Some people suggest that there was a pig living right up here in Baidinua. And it was found a week later, all the way down by Graigaderin, eating happily. But apart from a few sheep and a lot of damage to the village and a huge amount of damage to the mine workings, nobody died. Because it was Saturday and because the mine owners had decided that it was good for the men to have their allotments. And that's one thing that we can be very, very happy about. And that's what happened to these dams right up here above Brunegro's Quarry, right the way up above Abergenola. But before I go, I just want to ask you one question. Should they have built them up here? I mean, they powered the winding gear that pulled the slate out of the pit. Very innovative. One of the first places in the whole world to have such newfangled gadgetry. But the danger to the men, was it worth it? There was nowhere for this water to go. Only one place. And down the mine it went. Hmm. Thanks for listening. Bye.